Last couple of minutes, President Trump firing back as the New York Times claims in their lead story that they have a decade's worth of his tax documents from 25 and 35 years ago showing massive losses. He tweeted, real estate developers in the 1980s and 1990s, more than 30 years ago, were entitled to massive write-offs and depreciation, which would, if one was actively building, show losses and tax losses in almost all cases. Much was non-monetary, sometimes considered a tax shelter. He continues, you would get it by building or even buying. You always wanted to show losses for tax purposes. Almost all real estate developers did and often renegotiate with banks. It was sport. <laughs> Additionally, the very old information put out is a highly inaccurate fake news hit job. All right, joining us now is Newt Gingrich, who I don't think has bought buildings, casinos, or golf courses yet. But I actually thought this was flat out fascinating over the last 10 years. At a time in which sometimes the market crashed, he bought stuff. When things weren't making money yet, he bought out his partners. And a lot of this stuff turned around. But along the way, Newt, you're a big businessman too, in your own right. You take write-offs to incentivize more risks. Neat. Right. So I found this whole thing fascinating. Did the New York Times, in illustrating this, actually hurt their own cause? Well, I mean, I mean, first of all, just assume that the New York Times is the mortal enemy of President Trump. Uh, it'd be fun, for example, uh, to challenge the owner of the New York Times to uh, release all of his tax returns and find out how many loopholes and shelters the New York Times and the family have taken over the last 30 or 40 or 50 years. It would be fascinating to have Nancy Pelosi release her family tax returns uh, and find out how many different things they've done because they're pretty rich. Uh, and what you'd find is, look, <clears throat> Donald Trump knew he was going to be audited. He was a very serious businessman. He had very good lawyers, very good accountants. But this is actually an argument for the Trump tax cuts. When you lower taxes, yep. there is less reason to have shelters. And when you lower taxes, there's less reason to create losses for tax purposes. So in a very real way, uh, the Trump tax cuts are vindicated mm -hmm. by the New York Times story. Well but every American should ask themselves, how sick do you get? When the New York Times and the Washington Post go out of their way day after day after day to find an excuse to attack the president. Well, this, of the this was the headline, the New York Times, decade in the red, Trump tax figures show over one billion in business losses. How much does this really matter, though? I mean, maybe it would have mattered <laughs> in 2016, but now look at the economy. Is this more of just interesting information or will it really sway the oh, way people sure. vote? Look. We, we live in the age of the Kardashians, and the New York Times has managed to descend to that level. Uh, the fact is, that, let, let's be clear, Donald Trump is rich, and this is not a shock. He, you know, he announced for president uh, at Trump Tower coming down this giant escalator into this marble room. <laughs> that he uh, built. And it's kind of obvious he's rich. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, he was clever about what he was able to do with the tax code, and in fact, the other taxpayers helped make him rich because <clears throat> he did legally what he was allowed to do. And I repeat what I said a minute ago. I would love to see the Salzberger family release all of their records, show us all the different tax advantages that their companies have taken over the years. How did, how did they do, for example, when they sold the Boston Globe? Uh, I, I think that this kind of one-sided, dishonest attack is part of what is sickening American politics and making it harder to get decent people to run. Well, I, I, Newt, I think you touched on the um, main point, and that is it was legal. Everything, you know, there is no suggestion in the New York Times story that he broke any laws. The big headline is that this guy who has presented himself as a world-class businessman lost a billion dollars. They didn't lose a billion dollars. He had a billion dollars in losses inside a bunch of companies who were making a heck of a lot more than a billion dollars. I mean, if he had lost a billion dollars, he'd have been out of business. He was not out of business. I, I tell everybody, if you read The Art of the Deal and The Art of the Comeback, Trump's very honest in The Art of the Comeback. He says, look, I was deeply in debt. 
The economy went bad. The, the first Iraq war was expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, Atlantic City ceased to be a cash cow. Uh, he had all sorts of things going. He's very open about it in these books. And for the New York Times to suddenly find with great shock, it's like the scene in Casablanca where they talk about, I'm shocked that gambling is going on here, but I need to pick up my winnings. Uh, the New York Times, I'll beg you, has used every single shelter that they reported on, and mm. I challenge them to release the New York Times taxes and the Salzburger family taxes, and they'll never right. do it. And Newt, I'll tell you what, if I'm China and I'm coming here with a delegation to do a deal with the president, and I read this, when things got tight, he bought out his partners. He doubled down and bought more things. He is a fearless negotiator who came out on top. He was playing the long game. And if China's coming to town and wants to read this and feel as though they can beat this guy, good <laughs> luck. Dig in. All right. Newt, Look, thank if, you. If I get a chance to talk... To if I get a chance to talk to the Chinese delegation, read the two books by Trump. You'll learn better about how tough a negotiator he is. Well, your new book is called Collusion. He also it's a novel. Is it based on a true story? It's a novel. Well, it's based on the Russians trying to destroy the U.S. Senate with poison. And it's a reminder that the Russians, in fact, are very dangerous and very tough. And they do try to find people to collude with, including former FBI agent Robert Hansen, who spied for them for 25 years. I remember him. Uh, also, check out his podcast. It's Newt's World. It's available everywhere. Newt Gingrich, thank you very much. Thank you, Newt. Great to be with you. All right. All right.